Making a hat as easy as one, two, three. You can make it fit you and me. You can put it on your head or hang it on your knee. Watch this video and you will see just how easy it can be. Okay, so we're back. This is the marathon hat making day of the century. I'm kind of feeling a little blitzed at this point. I usually break these up into different classes. So I'm, I apologize if I'm a, a little crazy. Probably no crazier than usual, for sure. So, um, so now we're talking about straw. And straw, like I said uh, in the felt session, straw has very similar properties to felt, especially if it's natural. What is straw? It's grass. I kid you not, it's grass. Whereas wool is a protein fiber, straw is a plant fiber. And just like protein fibers, plant fibers will stretch and mold if they're natural. And a lot of straw hats these days have polyester in them. You know, the more polyester it has, the less it's going to do anything for you except sit there. Or it might melt, but it will melt in the wrong way. You, you won't be happy with it. This is an example of a straw body, which is very similar to a felt body. Notice that it has the brim attached to the hood. And you can cut the brim off of the hood just like you did with your felt hoods if they were attached to a skirt or was an entire body. The skirt and the hood are considered a, a body in its entirety. And just as with the hoods, if you want to cut the straw, if you want to separate the brim from the hood, make sure, just as you do with felt, that you add a 5 8 inch, you know, cut your, cut your brim with 5 8 inches from the hood. Does that make sense? 5 8 inches from the, don't mm -hmm. cut it right here at the crease because you need a, a neck that you can then either place on top of the hood or slip that neck inside the hood like you did with your sailor hats. Mm -hmm. And the only difference is that straw, because it's a grass, before you cut the straw, you want to machine stitch on both sides of where you're going to cut. And that will help control the, the fray of the straw. So don't forget that part because you'll be really sorry. I'm not quite sure what you do with this. If you look at this up close, this is actually a basket weave and it's my only sample that I have available to show you. But this basket weave, I'm, I'm trying to imagine if I cut this, what kind of, you know, because it is a basket weave, uh, you can, you, you kind of see what I mean, right? Jack, Jacqueline's uh, right, uh, shaking her head yes. I don't know if I would dare cut this one apart, but a lot of the, the flatter straws you can easily cut as long as you sew on either side. So you have straw hats that resemble your, your hood bodies. You can get straw hoods too. Just, just ask Judith M or Lico. Either one of them will have it. You can also use straw braid. And this is an example you can see that this is straw braid that's, be, that's been woven. Can, you, can mm -hmm. you see how that's, this is braid that's been woven. You can see it up here. This is the kind of thing that I would think Izzy would just go crazy over. One of my graduate students from years ago who's teaching in Florida somewhere, I've lost track of her. I, I haven't heard from her in the last 10 years, but I'm sure she's doing great. She created this hat as a project uh, as a personal project and spent all night on it and hated it by the time she got done with it. Don't let that happen to you. No, I'm being silly. Of course let that happen to you because, because sometimes you just want to finish the hat and let the world go by. Jacqueline will have a song to that effect at some point soon. Maybe you've already heard it, maybe not. Finishing the hat. Um, but she, she hated this hat so much that she gave it to me so that I could show future students like you all. But I've, I've loved it. I mean, I think this looks like something out of Shakespeare. Once you see it on, it looks much better on than off. Can you see how fabulous that is? Mm -hmm. Especially when you cock it, don't forget to cock. How could you not love this hat? But it did give her lots of angst all night trying to get all these woven. 
the, the edges start at, on the outside and she created one big giant circle, if you can imagine. And then as she made this big circle of braiding in and out, then this part is folded over so that you have a double layer for the brim, but then there's a single layer for all of this. And it does have quite a bit of movement and spring to it because it's just braid. I just think it's fabulous. It is my hope that all of you will have a chance to work with straw braid at some point. I had, I had another hat that I wanted to show you. This is uh, supposedly a Lily Dache. It was from a vintage shop. You, you never know when there's fakes out there. I did see some problematic stitching. But what's neat about this one is it, it is straw braid used in a very unusual way. If you look at the inside, you see the Dache label. But uh, you also see the foundation, which is uh, a, a kind of, it's, it's a, a semblance of, of hair canvas that has been cut in a circle and then attached to a rounded crown. I don't know if that makes sense from the camera, but this is a separate piece from this circle brim. That is what's serving as the foundation for this fabulous braid and if you look closely, you can see how e this is the braid and it's being pleated and then sewn. It's, it's attached to some kind of uh, extra nylon hair canvas of some sort. And then that's attached to the foundation as this pleat. It's kind of like a, a, a continuing inverted box pleat and then a box pleat, inverted then box. And so you get this marvelous effect here. It's really quite stunning. And it's another way to think about straw braid. I should stop assuming that anything is polyester, but it, it does feel like polyester and we wouldn't know unless we steamed it. Because if it, if it didn't steam, then it's definitely polyester. But I'm going to model this for you all because I suspect I look fabulous in Always, <laughs> always do. <Deb. laughs> as long as we cock it, we've got it. Maybe, maybe a little demure, you know, put it a little bit over the, the forehead a little bit. And there you have it. May all of you have your own Lily Dache hat someday. Just keep looking in the vintage shops. They're bound to be there somewhere. The, I've got quite a few handouts that I'm giving you if you give me your home address that have ways to work with straw braid. And you can get straw braid at any of the millinery shops. Judith M has it, um, Lico I'm sure has it, although I'm more familiar with Judith M stuff. I tell you, go be bold, do it. The other kind of straw is what Denise Dreyer calls straw cloth. I've never seen straw cloth in all my days of existence. It must be something that's very, I've never seen it at a millinery shop. Uh, it might be there, maybe I just haven't uh, asked for it for a while and they stocked they restocked up on it but but straw cloth is kind of like that fun felt that I was telling you about go use it with your eyes wide open because most of the time you're never going to get a flat surface to shape into a three-dimensional shape you might get it to shape a little bit but there's heavy machines that get these into this shape from a flat surface and you're not a heavy machine. That's why they, they sell these hoods and bodies to you instead of flat cloth. But I just mention that because she mentions it. Also, because straw is a grass, it's a natural fiber, it can dry out, right? That you guys have all pulled out pitiful straw hats from our stock and they, they're cracked. They start to crack because they're, they're dry. And so there's a point when if they crack too much, they're just broken. But if you get them before, it, you can kind of tell when they're starting to get really poopy looking. That's one of the things we do with our renovating hats project, which we won't be able to do for this class. But we find a, a pitiful straw hat in there and we just steam it. We just give it a bath of steam and it, you'd be amazed how much more it comes to life. You can also take a, a cloth, put a little bit of Vaseline on it, and just rub the cloth with the Vaseline in circles over the straw and get some of that, that oil into the straw. And, and that will bring it back to life. Now, if it's polyester, it's never gonna crack. It's never gonna do anything. It's gonna be here longer than we are. It's gonna be longer here longer than the roaches.
but um, but that's a whole other cup of coffee. Let's see if this one will steam. This has a basket weave. Notice the, the crease. I'm going to see if I can steam this crease out. And I have a kind of a good feeling about it. I'm gonna, let's just see. And you know, sometimes you just don't know until you try. And we've got a full head of steam. That must be where that phrase comes yes. from. The full head of head, get it? Head, hat, head of steam. Get that all really wet. Should we try singing happy birthday to you like we do when we wash our hands? Oh. Happy birthday to you. Where's my uke? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Happy birthday to you. Oh, 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 it's hot. Hot, hot, hot. Woo! Because it's hot, hot. Deb Bell, the mad scientist. So I'm not going to do center front and center back. I'm just going to put this on because. Because I am. Okay, so let's see if we can get this this crease to come out of this. Ooh, it is fragile. This is a dry one. This has been around for a while. It's starting to crack. Fragile. But it is a stretchy one, so it just needs a lot more love. It needs some steam all over. It needs a steam bath. But you can see how we're getting rid of that crease. It's saying, yes, I love it. I love it. Oh yes, it's like butter. Oh, it's saying yes. If we wanted to put the crease back into this hat, all we'd have to do is get one of our hat blocks that has a crease. Of course, we don't have one that has a crease, so we'd have to make up one and we could get this rounded shape. Now, see, it's fragile. I, I see some straw that's breaking. This has been in my office way too long. And you can see how flexible it is. I mean, you don't need to put sizing in there. I, I really encourage you not to fool with sizing when they kill brain cells. But look at that. That has changed into a whole other thing. Ooh. Of course, we, now we'd have to steam all this because this is all floppy now. But we could do that with our trusty steamer. We have the power. I have the power. We have the power. There's, there's a number of other characteristics of straw that Denise shows you. Again, the straw braid, if you can take a picture of this, that you can see on page uh, 128, you know, this shows where you start the straw braid at the top of your hood, your, your balsa head block, and you just pin it in, and then you stitch the braid in a circle until you get all the way around the head block, until you get go down as far as you want. And then she shows you how to close up the braid at the very end, once you've got it into the shape that you want. And then, of course, you know, mis machine stitching it you know, with a light stitch. It's a good way to finish it off. Another thing that she talks about, while, and while we've got the book out, this might be a good time for you to, she shows you how you could, you can also put straw braid on top of your buckram so that you, you can just stitch it onto your buckram. You've, do, you've done these sailor hat brims, right? Mm -hmm. And so she's, she's just taking that sailor hat brim and then putting the, the straw braid on top of it like that and sewing it, stitching it all on. Here's showing how to wrap that around here. But you could also wrap it around the crown of the, of the buckram as well and have something very nice. Again, your straw is delicate. It can be brittle. It can get brittle very quickly. Even the straw hats in your, in your closet, if you've got a favorite straw hat that you like for the beach, always give it a little bit of love. Put it in some plastic and steam it and it will give you many more years of, uh, of happiness. I encourage you to read some of the handouts that I, I, I'm sending you on straw braid. And be, be brave, you know, it's, it's, it's not that challenging. Denise D uh, Dreyer gives you a formula for how to calculate how much straw braid you need depending on the shape of your hat. So, you know, you might, you might wanna Think about that if you feel nervous about estimating it yourself. 
And I'm looking through my notes here. Uh, that's probably the most, the most important aspects of working with, with straw. And maybe some of you will have an opportunity to do that. Depending on how things go in the next few weeks, you know, if you feel comfortable coming back uh, into this space, even after classes end, I am going to be around this summer and it would be very easy for me to come over and let you in and you know you could you could experiment further after class obviously you already have your grade this would just be you know if you're interested in really really pursuing what what it is we offered you for this class and you, that you paid money for for this class in terms of supplies I would welcome arranging a time when it would suit both of our schedules for me to come over and you know, help you set up some of the equipment, the steamer, the hat blocks, um, the buckram, the wire, all of that, uh, if you, you know, if, if you want to explore on your own, which, I mean, there's, there's nothing better than, as you know, I mean, you, you, you can look at a video, you can read a book, but until you actually start doing it yourself, you really, do, you know, it's hard to master it. It's hard to feel felt until you felt it hot. Ha ha. Ooh, that sounds, that sounds titillating. Ah. Um, so uh, I'm getting a little kooky here, so I'm going to say sayonara, and we will get through this, and I, I do wish you all many, many happy hours of hat making.